Hey guys, today I show you the second season of the sci-fi thriller TV series, L.A. Brea. L.A. Brea season two continues with the drama unfolding in Hollywood's Forest Park. The ground violently shook, causing giant rocks to collapse, forming a massive sinkhole. Panic ensued as bystanders fled, but one couple rushed back to save their daughter, who remained at the foot of the mountain. After a terrifying moment, they found their daughter unharmed, though a mysterious sinkhole appeared on the hillside. Introduced in season one, this sinkhole was a time rift that took people back 10,000 years. Eve, who fell into the Los Angeles sinkhole, found herself in the distant past. Her husband, Gavin, also entered the sinkhole from Seattle, seeking his family. Despite the distance between Seattle and Los Angeles, Gavin, Izzy, and Ella embarked on a perilous journey through the ancient landscape. While trekking across the dangerous grassland, they encountered animal tracks, warning them of lurking wildlife. Gavin managed to hunt a wild boar in their desperate search for food. However, their relief was short-lived as a woolly rhinoceros appeared, forcing Gavin to flee and tumble down a hill. Fortunately, the rhinoceros spared him, and the group survived to enjoy their meal of roasted boar. Despite the dangers, Ella remained determined to find her sister, and the group continued their journey. As they proceeded, Gavin grew uneasy, sensing the rhinoceros may still follow them. Their fears were momentarily alleviated when a small, seemingly harmless creature emerged from the bushes, but they soon realized it was a young rhinoceros, foreshadowing further challenges ahead. The group trembled in fear as they saw the rhinoceros' parents. Returning would mean encountering the giant rhinoceros that was tracking them. Gavin made a bold choice. He threw his spear with all his strength. The noise scared the rhinoceros' family, allowing the group to slip away quietly. But his daughter stumbled, alerting one of the rhinos. Gavin quickly helped her, but soon found themselves surrounded by two massive rhinoceroses. Gavin kept his composure, crouching low as the rhinoceroses leaped over them, fighting each other. He swiftly helped his daughter move away from the chaos. After crossing the forest, they reached a clearing and were shocked to find iron signs scattered across the grassland, Hollywood signs. Gavin smiled, knowing Los Angeles was nearby. Meanwhile, Eve, in an ancient Los Angeles camp, was heartbroken. Her son Josh and his friend Riley had been pulled into the time-space portal. Ty tried to comfort her, assuring her they would reunite with her family one day. At the same time, Riley's father, Sam, interrogated Silas, hoping to learn more about the time-space rift to save his daughter. Silas remained stubborn, revealing nothing. Sam grew furious, but Levi intervened, reminding him that their food supplies were dwindling and they couldn't risk angering the local tribe. Ty calmed everyone down, and soon after, the tribe arrived with supplies. The tribal leader, Para, showed affection toward Ty as their budding romance grew. Para wanted to take Silas back, as he was part of their tribe. Ty objected, believing they needed information from him. Para compromised for Ty's sake. Sam, still desperate, dragged Silas into the forest and threatened him with a gun. Silas finally relented, revealing that while he couldn't save Sam's daughter, a woman named Rebecca might. She had jumped into the time-space portal and had the knowledge to help. Eve felt lost because Rebecca had already left the camp. The old man revealed that Rebecca must have headed to the Lazarus Building, a towering structure made of glass and steel seen in the previous season. It stood like a beacon in the Ice Age plains. As suspected, Rebecca was on her way there with Scott, claiming she had an important mission to complete that could determine everyone's fate. Eve knew finding Rebecca was her only chance to reunite with her son. However, Ty worried the old man might be lying to divide them. Sam, suspicious, decided to stay behind and watch the old man while Eve and Levi set off to find Rebecca. Levi was thrilled, as he had long been in love with Eve. On their journey, they encountered Lucas, mourning by a pile of stones, the grave of his mother, who had died from injuries during a fight with the natives. While paying respects, they overheard shouting nearby and discovered Veronica had been captured by a group of natives, different from Para's tribe. Eve, Levi, and Lucas decided to rescue Veronica. Lucas signaled Veronica with broken stones, and she distracted the guards. Lucas sprinted to help, with Levi blocking any interference. Eve quickly found the handcuff keys, and together they freed Veronica. However, 
a guard soon pursued them. Levi stayed behind, dodging a spear and firing a shot to take down the guard. Levi hurried to the meeting point, but Eve was missing. She had heard the gunshot and worried about Levi, returned to check on him, only to be captured. Levi then revealed himself, willingly becoming a captive to stay with Eve. In her emotions, Eve forgot about her husband, Gavin. Meanwhile, Josh and Riley woke up in a forest, confused. They stumbled onto a road, where they spotted an old car and a group of young people dropping a cassette tape. From these clues, Josh and Riley realized they had returned to 1988. Further down the road, they saw a little boy, Isaiah, being shoved into a car by two nuns. Josh stopped Riley from intervening, reminding her that Isaiah's path had returned to normal and that they shouldn't interfere. However, Riley raised a profound question. If her father was now a young boy, did that mean she and Josh didn't belong in this world? They debated the question without a conclusion and soon became hungry. Luckily, they found an empty house. Josh let them in and they ate like they hadn't eaten in days. A voice message on the phone revealed that the homeowner wouldn't return until next week, which relieved them. But Riley soon felt uneasy, realizing they didn't belong to this world. Determined to find a way back, they started gathering supplies. Then, they noticed a newspaper report on a mysterious sinkhole in Hollywood's Forest Park. Realizing it could be their way out, they packed their bags and headed toward the sinkhole. Meanwhile, Eve and Levi were taken into a dimly lit mine. After a brutal beating, they learned they were being treated as labor slaves. Refusing to mine, they approached an old miner for information. The miner revealed that all the workers had fallen into a sinkhole in Los Angeles. Eve wanted to know more about the natives, but the miner advised them to keep their heads down to survive. The next day, Levi asked the miner for another way out. The miner mentioned a tunnel, but said they needed a map. Levi, however, believed breaking through the main entrance was the best option. When the miner rallied others to help, the tribal leader grew suspicious. As a result, Levi was caught trying to intervene and was dragged deeper into the mine after a harsh punishment. After a long journey, Eve's husband, Gavin, and their daughter finally reached the Los Angeles camp. Calling out for Eve, they quickly drew attention. Sam rushed over, and Gavin, recalling his childhood memories, mentioned how Sam had once bandaged a wound for him. Seeing the scar on Gavin's hand, Sam realized this was Isaiah, the boy who had grown into Gavin. Everyone knew Gavin had traveled through a time-space tunnel to 1988 and began questioning how he returned. Gavin explained that the portal had closed after he arrived, and he was only there to find his wife and son. Lucas broke the silence, informing them that the natives likely captured Eve and Levi. Sam added that Josh, Gavin's son, had also traveled to 1988. The news devastated Gavin, who had hoped for a family reunion. However, Lucas mentioned that Eve was taken by armored natives, known as the Exiles, who enslaved others. Gavin recalled that his grandfather had spoken about these people. Sam led Gavin to his grandfather, who was being held captive. Though their reunion was awkward, Gavin was determined to find Eve and asked for the exile's location. His grandfather agreed to help, but insisted on accompanying them as it was dangerous. Ty warned Gavin that the old man might try to escape, but the urgency of rescuing Eve forced Gavin to agree. Sam and others tried to stop him, reminding Gavin that the tribe leader wanted to take his grandfather back. Still, Gavin was determined. He tied his grandfather's hands and set off toward the exile's camp. As they traveled, Gavin's grandfather reminisced about teaching him to hunt, but Gavin remained unmoved. He recalls how his grandfather once tried to prevent him from returning to 1988, nearly costing his children their lives. Though his grandfather claimed he was protecting Gavin, Gavin believed he was still hiding important information. He resolved not to trust him until all the mysteries were revealed. Gavin grew irritated with his grandfather and demanded to know where his parents were. Just as the old man was about to respond, a noise interrupted them. Gavin stepped on a concealed trap and fell, hanging from a tree as a bear approached. His grandfather vanished, only to return and save him by taking down the bear. Their strained relationship softened and they moved on. They reached a hill where the grandfather pointed out a back door used by the exiles. They waited for nightfall to sneak in. Now more sincere, 
The old man revealed that Gavin's parents were alive in this timeline, but in great danger, so he had kept it a secret. Gavin pressed for more, but his grandfather refused, saying it was time to focus on the exiles. As they prepared, Gavin suddenly felt dizzy and passed out, realizing too late that something had been mixed into his water. His grandfather left him behind. Meanwhile, Eve anxiously awaited news of Levi. Soon, a wounded Levi was brought back. Overcome with emotion, Eve kissed him, and they gave in to their feelings. Gavin was later found by native guards and taken to the same cave where Eve and Levi were. It was about to get awkward when Gavin met them. Though initially angry with his grandfather, Gavin found a map in his pocket, realizing his grandfather had slipped it there while he was unconscious. The map showed the tunnels, allowing Gavin to help Eve escape. Meanwhile, Josh and Riley were trying to return to their loved ones. They arrived at the Hollywood sinkhole, believing it contained a time portal. However, the area was heavily guarded, making it impossible to approach. Riley suggested waiting until night to make their move. While Josh and Riley were enjoying 80s food at an amusement park, they spotted a man in glasses who had been following them. Riley confronted him and confessed that he was a local geology professor studying sinkholes for years. He explained that multiple sinkholes had appeared over time, releasing intense energy waves. Based on his research, he predicted a massive sinkhole would form in the city center in four days, potentially causing a devastating tsunami. Despite his warnings, no one believed him, thinking he was crazy. After overhearing Josh's conversation, the professor thought Josh might provide vital information to help him present solid evidence to the authorities. Josh and Riley agreed and decided to share everything they knew to help prevent the disaster. Meanwhile, even Levi contacted the old miner and planned their escape during the exile's shift change at noon when the main door would briefly open. To Eve's shock, she bumped into Gavin. She couldn't believe he had traveled through time and braved the dangers to find her. Levi soon noticed Gavin's presence, and the two embraced, though there was tension between them. Gavin, unaware, discussed his escape plan, showing a map given to him by Isaiah's grandfather. However, Eve and Levi were suspicious of the old man and preferred to break through the main gate with the miners. When noon came, their plan unfolded. The old miner pretended to have a heart attack, and when the guards checked, even Levi knocked them out. Levi then led the miners in a charge through the main door, overpowering the remaining guards. As the situation worsened, the gatekeeper lowered the cave door. Levi acted quickly, taking down the gatekeeper while Gavin struggled to hold the lock to prevent the door from closing. Once all the miners and Levi had escaped, Gavin rolled out just as the gate slammed shut. However, reinforcements from the exiles soon arrived, surrounding the miners. Faced with armed opponents, Levi and the others surrendered. The leader of the exiles planned to imprison everyone, but Gavin took responsibility for the escape, trying to protect the others. The leader used this to his advantage, blaming Gavin and keeping the others to continue mining. Gavin was thrown into the dungeon, where he was beaten and scheduled for execution that night. Desperate, Gavin pleaded in the native language, claiming he was not an outsider. His punishment was reduced, but he still endured a harsh beating. When he was released, Eve felt heartache, realizing that Gavin had returned to being the responsible man he once was. She began questioning her feelings for Levi. The exile's leader commanded the miners to move to another mine. Levi, shocked, knocked out the rear guard and returned to Gavin's cell. With the guards gone, Levi suggested they use the map to find the hidden exit. Though weakened, Gavin agreed, and they followed the map to the exit. They unexpectedly ran into the leader there. Levi and the group quickly subdued him, but Gavin chose to spare his life. Meanwhile, at the survivor's camp, Scott, who had been traveling with Rebecca, appeared alone. He claimed they had been separated after encountering mammoths. The group became anxious, as only Rebecca knew how to save Josh and Riley. Suspiciously, Scott pretended to know nothing. Para and her tribe returned to the survivor's camp, but this time not to deliver supplies. Ty sensed something was wrong with Para's cold demeanor. She demanded Isaiah's grandfather, explaining that pressure from her tribe forced her hand. Unfortunately, since Gavin had taken the old man away, no word from him had been heard. 
Tai begged Para for more time, but she became furious and announced that her tribe would cut all ties with the survivors, taking back all the food they had provided. Stunned, the survivors realized they might face starvation. After Para's tribe left, the group discussed their dire situation. Sam suggested hunting or fishing, but only Eve had the necessary skills. Lucas proposed raiding Para's tribe for food, but Sam and Ty quickly opposed the idea, citing their lack of weapons and the moral implications. Surprisingly, Scott supported the idea, pushing for a vote. The majority rejected the plan, but Scott later suggested a more minor group could sneak in and steal food instead. Lucas felt uneasy, noticing how Scott seemed different after his trip with Rebecca, but Scott insisted that hunger was the real threat. Veronica reluctantly agreed to join. That night, Lucas, Scott, and others reached the tribe's camp. They sneaked in through a dog hole they had used weeks earlier. Scott tripped, claiming to have sprained his ankle, and sent Lucas and Veronica ahead. However, once they were gone, Scott stood up, perfectly fine, and hurried off in another direction. He muttered coordinates under his breath and entered Isaiah's grandfather's room, eventually finding a metal card hidden in a book. Meanwhile, Lucas and Veronica spotted a familiar man, the one Lucas believed had killed his mother. Veronica urged Lucas to stop, reminding him that revenge wouldn't change the past, but Lucas ignored her. He followed the man to a house and through the door saw him happily playing with his child. Moved by the scene, Lucas abandoned his desire for revenge, realizing the impact his actions could have on the man's family. After collecting food, Lucas, Veronica, and Scott hurried back to the camp. Their return with fresh supplies lifted the spirits of the survivors, though Sam and Ty remained uneasy. Later, Scott secretly ventured into the forest to meet Rebecca. It was revealed that Scott had stolen the metal card from Isaiah's grandfather's home on her orders. In contrast, Scott felt guilty for betraying his friends. Rebecca reassured him that the card was necessary to reach the tower and save everyone from an impending crisis. Meanwhile, Eve and her group were nearing the camp, wondering why the exiles were gathering so many oars for the tower. Gavin reminded her to be ready to see their daughter again. Overcome with emotion, Eve rushed to the camp and reunited with her daughter after months of separation, tears in her eyes. However, their joy was short-lived as a thick mist enveloped the camp. Gavin recognized this dangerous phenomenon, knowing the mist would soon reduce visibility to zero. Despite the risk, Gavin was determined to find Rebecca. Scott informed him that Rebecca was nearby, but insisted Gavin meet her alone. Eve overheard and wanted to go with him, but Gavin convinced her to stay. As he left, he attempted a hug, but Eve avoided it, seeing Levi nearby. Sensing the tension, Gavin disappeared into the mist. Guided by Scott, Gavin planned to meet Rebecca first before going to the tower. As they moved through the mist, they heard distant roars and hid. Gavin expressed doubts about the tower's purpose, but Scott explained that Rebecca had told him there was a portal leading to the future. Just then, Rebecca emerged from the mist. At the camp, Lucas grew suspicious of Scott's strange behavior and decided to follow him into the forest. Instead of finding Scott, Lucas ran into men from Para's tribe. They had discovered the food theft and planned to attack the survivor's camp in retaliation. Lucas and his companion rushed back to warn Sam, who then complained about the theft. Lucas responded defiantly, reminding everyone that they had enjoyed the stolen food. Veronica interrupted the argument before it could escalate. Seeing the thick fog surrounding them, Sam knew they couldn't escape and would have to fight. He gathered the survivors to discuss their options and saw they had few weapons, making a direct battle impossible. Eve suggested starting a large fire to distract the attackers, and Sam approved, instructing everyone to gather materials. Ty, however, was uneasy about fighting Para's tribe, believing it wasn't Para's intention to attack. Sam and Eve agreed the battle was necessary to start negotiations. The survivors quickly set up their defenses. When the aboriginals arrived, they fell for the decoys, allowing the survivors to prepare a counterattack. Before they could strike, Para suddenly appeared with Gavin, ordering her men to stand down. Suddenly, a beast's roar echoed through the fog, and a pack of wolves appeared, freezing everyone in fear. Eve screamed, and the survivors scattered, seeking shelter. A wolf knocked down Rebecca, 
Gavin fought it off with a stick and along with Scott, dragged Rebecca into a small car for safety. Meanwhile, Eve saw Para's tribe leader fall. As she rushed to help him, a wolf attacked, but Levi saved her and they took refuge in a smelly toilet. The bald leader, grateful, vowed not to trouble the survivors again. Back at camp, Eve bandaged her wounds and set out to rescue her daughter, who was trapped in a bus surrounded by wolves. Inside the bus, Veronica and other survivors were terrified as the wolves scratched at the roof, creating a hole. Gavin rushed to help but met Eve along the way. They quickly devised a rescue plan, relying on Levi's flammable ore from the mine. As the wolves nearly broke through the bus, Sam used a fire extinguisher to block their attack. At the same time, Gavin entered the bus, telling everyone to duck. Outside, Eve shot an arrow fitted with the ore into the fire, causing a powerful explosion. The flames forced the wolves to flee, and the survivors were saved. After this ordeal, Para's tribe and the survivors reconciled. Ty, who had hidden during the attack, realized he shouldn't oppose Para because of the survivors. Touched, Para reconciled with him. Meanwhile, Scott panicked as Rebecca's condition worsened. Gavin and the others rushed to help, but it was clear Rebecca was nearing the end. Gathering her strength, Rebecca told Gavin he wasn't alone. His mother would return from 1988 to fix things. Before he could ask more, Rebecca passed away. Though devastated, Gavin resolved to continue her plan, steal the ore, infiltrate the tower, and bring their children home. Josh and Riley, still in 1988, were less focused on returning home and more eager to prove the sinkhole's existence. Josh's phone, manually charged, was back on, and the photos stored in it were clear evidence of the time-space portal. They took the phone to a wise, bearded professor who decided to seek help from Dr. Caroline, an expert in the field. However, when Caroline saw the photos, she dismissed them as special effects and walked away. Fortunately, her assistant believed Josh and Riley and brought them to Caroline's home, where they finally shared their time travel story. When they mentioned Isaiah, Caroline was shocked. He was her son. Josh, stunned, realized Caroline was his grandmother. Meanwhile, back at camp, Gavin planned to infiltrate the mysterious tower using the portal to rescue Josh. He decided the best way was to disguise themselves as a mining team. As they prepared, Gavin suspected Eve had fallen for someone else, but still hoped to mend their relationship. Their conversation was interrupted by a noise from the woods. A lean figure emerged. It was the old miner who had escaped. He warned that the exiles were preparing to close the mine and the guards had doubled. Despite the increased danger, Gavin and the group went to investigate. As the miner had said, the guards were sorting ore and preparing to split the miners. Gavin's team had to decide whether to hijack the ore truck or save the miners first. Levi suggested splitting up. Gavin, Eve, their daughter, and Sam would hijack the truck. However, they soon fell into a trap set by the exiles. Sam found bones nearby, realizing they weren't the first ones there. Suddenly, Gavin's daughter felt something on her back. It was a giant spider. Eve knocked it off, but the ceiling and ground soon crawled with spiders. Panicked, the group retreated. Sam tried to fend them off with a small flame, but it didn't work. Gavin spotted a hole in the wall, likely a tunnel from mining. They quickly crawled through it, and Gavin sealed the entrance behind them, escaping the swarm. Gavin and the group were still trapped in the mine despite escaping the spiders. Gavin pulled out the map and located a hidden exit, but when they reached it, they found it sealed. Panic set in, and their only option was to leave through the main entrance. Sam volunteered to scout ahead, leaving Gavin, Eve, and their daughter behind in tense silence. Gavin's daughter broke the awkwardness by expressing her wish for their family to return to how it used to be, making her parents uncomfortable. Sam returned and reported that while he found the main entrance, it was guarded by four men, with more near the exit. The group devised a plan, sneak around and strike the guards with shovels. After knocking out the four guards, Gavin and the others disguised themselves. As Eve was about to remove her jacket, two more guards passed. Gavin quickly pulled her aside, and for a brief moment, their eyes locked. The tension was palpable, but Eve broke it by focusing on their task, signaling her emotional resistance. Meanwhile, Levi, Scott, and Lucas were planning to rescue the miners. However, 
the increased number of guards and the open terrain made a surprise attack difficult. Levi decided to get reinforcements from Para's tribe while Scott and Lucas stayed behind to monitor the guards. They soon realized the guards were planning to transport the miners by boat. Lucas knew they had to act fast or risk losing them. Ignoring Scott's warning to stay calm, Lucas emerged from the bushes and provoked the guards. As the guards chased Lucas, Scott took the opportunity to set the sailboats on fire, delaying the miners' departure. But the guards turned back, forcing Scott to run for his life. Just as he was about to be caught, arrows flew through the air, striking down the guards. Levi had returned with Para's tribe. Scott and Lucas, relieved, embraced. They had successfully delayed the miners and completed their mission. They had to meet Eve and the others at the mine's main entrance. Four guards pushed a mining cart, with Gavin and his group disguised among them. They planned to use the cart to reach the mysterious tower. However, they soon encountered another checkpoint, guarded by a sub-boss named Tamet. He was suspicious and questioned why they were delayed. Speaking the local language, Gavin calmly answered and they were allowed to pass. Soon after, a man in black reported that some bound guards had been found, alerting Tomet. Realizing something was wrong, he gathered his men to pursue Gavin's group. Tomet's group quickly caught up with the mining cart, only to find it empty. Gavin and his team ambushed them, but they misjudged their strength. At a critical moment, Levi charged like a bull, freeing Eve. Sensing defeat, Tomet fled. Para chased him with her bow but hesitated upon seeing his face. She lowered her weapon. Ty was confused, but Para explained that Tomet was her husband. She revealed that he betrayed their tribe by colluding with the exiles, and she had exiled him. After a brief pause, Para decided to return to prepare for possible revenge, while Gavin and the others continued toward the tower to rescue Josh and Riley. As they neared their destination, a towering modern structure appeared, leaving Gavin and his group in disbelief. Meanwhile, Josh and Riley met Caroline, Gavin's mother. They learned that Caroline had traveled back 10,000 years for an experiment meant to improve the world, but it failed, leading to the sinkholes. She returned to 1988 to correct her mistakes. Josh warned her that a massive sinkhole would open in 72 hours, triggering a tsunami. Caroline promised to help spread the news, but wanted to see Isaiah first. Riley was worried that Caroline's revelation of her identity to Isaiah could change his adoption history and cause Josh to disappear. However, Caroline had no intention of revealing the truth. Instead, she introduced Isaiah to his foster parents, urging him to trust them. Though Isaiah found her familiar, he couldn't place her. Caroline didn't explain further and left after promising to prevent the tsunami with Josh and Riley. Gavin and his group finally reached the tower, ready to face the guards. Levi and the others hid nearby, watching. The guards questioned Gavin as they didn't recognize him. Gavin explained that Tomet had killed the previous delivery man, and this was his first delivery. After some hesitation, the guards let them through. However, their every move was being monitored. Even Isaiah's grandfather, who had been following them, couldn't avoid detection. Suspicious, the security director ordered the guards to arrest Gavin's group. Just as panic set in, an arrow flew from the forest. Isaiah's grandfather had intervened. Levi and his team also emerged, battling the guards. Lucas was struck by an electric stick and cried out in pain. More guards arrived, forcing the group to retreat, but Gavin was captured, and Eve vowed to rescue him. Sam noticed footprints and believed Isaiah's grandfather had escaped. They followed the trail and found him in the forest. The old man warned them the tower was dangerous and suggested he would rescue Gavin alone. Eve refused to give up, so he reluctantly agreed to lead them. Soon, they realized Scott and Lucas had gone missing during the earlier fight, having gotten lost and separated from the group. Seeing the electric shock marks on Lucas, Scott remembered a similar incident in the camp where someone had died from similar burns. Worried about Lucas's life, Scott canceled their plan to infiltrate the tower and take Lucas back to the camp. However, Lucas's condition worsened, with red marks spreading. The camp lacked proper medical supplies, leaving them with little hope. Veronica brought some herbal medicine to ease his pain as a small token of gratitude, but Lucas's condition was deteriorating fast. Soon, the red marks had spread to Lucas's neck, 
and his mental state declined. Meanwhile, Eve and her group prepared to enter the tower with the old man's guidance to rescue Gavin. He knew of a drainage tunnel that led inside, but a giant eagle suddenly appeared as they approached. To distract the eagle, Eve shouted, drawing its attention while the others slipped into the drainage tunnel. The old man then shot an arrow at the eagle, allowing Eve to escape into the tunnel unharmed. The group finally reached the interior of the tower. They planned to get to the security room, where they could use the surveillance system to locate Gavin. However, they soon encountered engineers performing maintenance, and the security guards surrounded them, throwing the group into a panic. Meanwhile, Gavin awoke inside the tower, confused by a small wound on his neck. A stern man soon approached him, James, the building manager, revealing he was Gavin's father. Gavin wasn't shocked, having heard about James before. With a hint of resentment, he questioned why his father had never sought him out. James explained that he hadn't known Gavin was there and then revealed the tower's true purpose. James explained that he came from Los Angeles in 2076 when human destruction depleted Earth's resources. The Lazarus Project was created to reverse this damage by accessing the abundant resources of 10,000 years ago and transporting them through the portal to 2076 to save the future. Gavin remained confused. He knew his grandfather and mother had helped create the tower, so why had they fallen out with James? James grew upset and refused to explain. James led Gavin to the lab where a green light caught his attention, Aurora, a time travel mechanism. James proudly explained that black ore containing uranium powered Aurora for time travel. Gavin felt hopeful about returning to 1988, but James revealed they only had a portal to 2076, not 1988. But James promised to find a way if Gavin agreed to stay. Gavin was torn between reuniting with his family and his distrust of James, sensing his father was hiding something. James then showed Gavin a childhood photo with his mother admitting past mistakes that had caused the family rift. Just then, an urgent report came in, and Gavin and James rushed to the tunnel where they found Eve and the others captured. The family reunited, but Gavin's grandfather, Silas, warned him not to trust James. Silas, who had helped build the tower, knew about the portal to 1988. James admitted he had lied, but claimed it was because he didn't want Gavin to leave. Gavin confronted James, saying that if he genuinely wanted to make amends, he should let them return to 1988 and release his grandfather. James, appearing regretful, agreed. Later, Gavin and his group gathered at the portal to 1988. Desperate to save his daughter, Sam stepped in first, followed by the others. An assistant questioned why James let Gavin go, but James knew he would lose him forever if he didn't. Instantly, Gavin and his group arrived at the beach in 1988, where Josh and Riley sat together. Excitedly, the family reunited after crossing over. Once the excitement settled, Josh eagerly shared what had happened these days. Caroline was trying to prevent sinkholes. She showed them a secret room filled with old computers. Caroline had been developing a virus to destroy the tower, believing it would stop the sinkholes. The computers suddenly shut down as they worked due to a blown fuse. Josh and Riley restored the power and stayed in the room, where they spent some lighthearted moments at a nearby skating rink. However, Caroline soon radioed them, warning that she had been discovered and needed Josh to cut the power. Her final message was cryptic, don't forget to eat their cereal. When Josh and Riley returned to the lab, Dr. Caroline was gone. Suspecting the tower's forces had taken her, Josh remembered her strange message. Inside the cereal box, they found something important, but they didn't know what it was. Gavin and the others realized that even 1988 was full of danger. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, and Josh knew a sinkhole was about to form. They needed to stop the tower project when an earthquake and tsunami loomed. Caroline became crucial to their mission. Luckily, she had left behind a signal receiver that could pinpoint her location. Using the device, they found Caroline in a warehouse guarded by men on a round-the-clock watch. Gavin distracted the guards at the front gate while they snuck in and attacked. After taking down the guards, Gavin and his mother finally reunited. But just as they prepared to escape, they alerted more guards. Levi stayed behind to hold them off but was shot. They escaped and regrouped with Eve, 
but Levi's wound was severe and needed immediate attention. Caroline had urgent matters to attend to. She needed to return home to improve the computer virus, fearing any delay would worsen the situation. A group quickly arrived at Caroline's house. While no enemies were found, they remained cautious. Even the kids were scattered to watch as Gavin followed his mother to the basement. Caroline quickly began editing the virus on her computer. Gavin asked how they could stop the tower. Caroline explained that she would create the virus and use the Hollywood sinkhole to return to the tower 10,000 years ago. Uploading the virus would destroy the portal and prevent future sinkholes. However, Gavin pointed out a flaw. Destroying the portal would trap them in the past. Caroline said they'd have to stay in the ancient era after shutting down the tower. Gavin discussed this with his family, and they decided to stay in 1988 instead of going back. Meanwhile, Sam and his daughter treated Levi's injury. When they arrived at Caroline's, they learned the portal would soon disappear. Sam thought they should return to the ancient era to reunite with his family, but Levi wanted to stay in 1988 to protect Eve. Suddenly, tower forces approached. Gavin rushed to the basement, and luckily, Caroline had just finished the virus. They escaped through the back door before the enemies broke in. Meanwhile, 10,000 years ago, Ty and Para hunted down Tomet and his remaining followers. They finally surrounded them in an open field before returning to the village where they found Lucas severely injured from electrocution. The red patterns on his body worsened. Tomet knew the injury and revealed healing herbs were nearby. Tomet proposed a deal. They had to let him go if Lucas was cured. Para refused. Tomet then suggested a duel by tribal rules. If he won, he would go free. If he lost, he'd hand over the antidote. Para agreed, but Tomet revealed that Ty would be his opponent, not her. Furious, Para ordered him taken away, but Ty insisted on fighting to save Lucas despite the risks. Scott and Veronica, worried about Lucas's worsening condition, knew they needed the antidote quickly. Scott then came up with an idea to solve the problem. Soon, Tomet was brought to the combat arena for the duel. Para announced that the fight would continue until one person died or surrendered. Tomet, experienced in combat, quickly gained the upper hand, knocking Tai down. But just as Tomet hesitated, locking eyes with Para, Tai seized the moment to strike back, turning the fight in his favor. Tomet was defeated and surrendered, and Tai and Para were relieved. Lucas was given a bowl of medicinal soup, and as they poured it into his mouth, the red marks on his body began to fade. Lucas was saved, and everyone was relieved. However, Scott had secretly made a deal with Tomet before the fight. Tomet would lose on purpose in exchange for Scott releasing him later. But after the duel, Scott broke the agreement and kept Tomet captive. To Scott's shock, Tomet laughed, revealing that the antidote Lucas drank was incomplete. Panicked, Scott had no choice but to cut Tomet's ropes. As soon as he was free, Tomet knocked Scott down and vowed revenge ready to make everyone pay for what they had done. No one knew Tomet had escaped. Everyone enjoyed the peaceful night, except for Lucas, who felt his right hand go numb. Something was wrong with Tomet's antidote. Meanwhile, Scott sat in fear, realizing the danger they were in. In 1988, Gavin and his group headed to the Hollywood sinkhole to send Caroline, Sam, and his daughter on their journey. Along the way, Caroline seemed troubled. She revealed that uploading the virus to the tower's mainframe was complex. Only two people could unlock the gene lock, Gavin and his father, James. This meant Gavin had to return to ancient times with Caroline. Before they could process this, Sam reported that the tower's forces were ahead, already expecting them. Gavin and his group quickly came up with a plan. Caroline distracted the guards, allowing Levi to charge in on a quad bike. Gavin followed, catching the guards off guard and knocking them into the sinkhole. With the last obstacle cleared, it was time to say goodbye. Gavin told his family he needed to return to the past. To his surprise, they all wanted to join him, believing the family should stay together. Eve later thanked Levi for supporting her through tough times, but hinted she was ready to move on. Realizing her intent, Levi chose to stay in 1988 and start a new life. After saying a bittersweet farewell to Levi, the group stood by the sinkhole. Caroline jumped in first, followed by Sam and his daughter. Just as Gavin was about to jump, he hallucinated Eve's death. But despite his fears, he leaped in with his family. Near their prehistoric campsite 10,000 years ago, Gavin, Eve, and others gathered through the Hollywood sinkhole, 
but Josh was nowhere to be seen. Despite searching separately, they found no trace of him. It showed that a new sinkhole would open soon in San Monica. Determined to upload the virus quickly, they set off towards the tower building to prevent a massive tsunami. Eve, Sam, and Riley protected Caroline as she went to the research station to upload the virus, while Gavin and Izzy entered the building. On the way, Sam tried to persuade Caroline to let him and Riley return to 2021 before destroying the portal. Still, Caroline explained that each new portal opening pointed to a new era and would create a new catastrophic pit. Sam temporarily compromised and thought of other methods at a loss for words. However, Eve noticed his intent with the USB drive. At the camp, people busied themselves with building shelters and various structures. Ella and Veronica went to find crystals to make an engagement gift for Ty. Suddenly, a giant buffalo charged into the camp, destroying the newly built scaffolding before leaving. Scott spotted a herd of hundreds of buffalo downstream through his telescope. If they migrated in their direction, their sheer size would destroy everything in the camp. The group gathered to devise a strategy. Eventually, Lucas developed a plan to change the direction of the migrating buffalo by filling containers with tar, lighting them, and scaring them away. Everyone sprang into action. Josh limped onto the bus, having twisted his ankle during his return, and returned to camp alone, explaining why his parents couldn't find him. Ella and Veronica, as they had hoped, found many amethysts in a cave. Veronica discovered a dwarf tree in a skylight of the cave, its leaves and flowers as red as blood. She recognized this dwarf tree as the one her deceased father had asked Lily to paint and mentioned that her old home had also grown such trees. Overwhelmed by painful memories, Veronica panicked and fled. Ella sensed more of the story and tried to inquire further. However, Veronica refused to discuss it further, not wanting past nightmares to affect her mood. Reluctantly, Ella dropped the matter. On the way to the research station, Caroline, Eve, and Riley stopped for water while Sam seized the opportunity to search Caroline's pockets and backpack for the USB drive. After being discovered, he awkwardly left. Fortunately, Eve had anticipated Sam's actions and had Caroline carry the USB drive so it wasn't stolen. Thwarted, Sam decided to destroy the power of the research station to stop her from uploading the virus. Here, knowing the medical room and portal were on the same floor, Gavin deliberately cut his arm. Gavin and Izzy entered the building as planned. Izzy found the same type of tree with red leaves and flowers in the green zone of the tower building. Her grandfather, James, told her that this tree was common in this prehistoric period and only growing in this era period. Combining what her father had just told her about a vision, Izzy instantly deduced her mother would die in this prehistoric era. Gavin entered the building deeper, taking the opportunity to bandage his wound. After treating the wound, under the startled gaze of Chief Operator Kira, he knocked out a guard and took Kira to the control center area. After sending the staff away, Gavin used his handprint to verify and activate the storage program. Caroline and Eve also arrived at the research station on the outskirts and initiated the system to start uploading the virus. At the same time, the camp witnessed the appearance of green cracks in the sky and thunderous booming, signaling that a tsunami was imminent. A startled herd of buffalo panicked and rushed toward the camp, but were diverted by the burning tar, narrowly avoiding a disaster. However, as salty rain with fish began to fall from the green cracks, dousing the burning tar, another wave of buffalo charged, threatening to trample everything in the camp. In desperation, Scott suggested an idea to use loud noises to scare the buffalo away, successfully altering their migration path and sparing the camp. Meanwhile, tension escalated in the building's control center as Gavin scanned his handprint and Kira secretly pressed an alarm. James arrived shortly after, persuasively speaking. Izzy told Gavin about a tree with red heart-shaped flowers identical to those Gavin had envisioned when he saw Eve collapsing. Gavin worried about his wife's life. James said he couldn't save his wife's life without the functional machine. James skillfully manipulated Gavin's fears and successfully convinced him. Just as the virus program uploaded to 99%, Gavin had no option and scanned his handprint again. This ultimately halted Caroline's virus upload. After Gavin did what James asked, Gavin asked about James's plan to save his wife's life. James explained that Caroline's recent upload had severely damaged the system and needed repair. Then James presented a paper with many formulas, which needed to be fixed as the second step. 
According to the algorithms and procedures, the portal could function normally and safely, but the program was incomplete. Its developer, Dr. Harlow Moore, a close friend of Caroline, who had been missing for over a year, was likely still in the prehistoric era. James planned to use Gavin to persuade Caroline to find Dr. Moore and complete the program. To save Eve, Gavin reluctantly agreed. Just as Eve arrived, questioning why the virus upload was stopped, Gavin confessed his visions to her. To prevent his visions from becoming reality, Gavin intended to take Eve away to another era, thus needing to keep the portal open. James appeared and repeated the solution that he told Gavin, but Eve, unable to trust James, walked away with Gavin and Izzy. Back at the camp, due to Josh informing everyone about Caroline's plan to destroy the portal to stop the tsunami, heated debates ensued. When Eve, Gavin, and Izzy returned, announcing the failure of their plan, it surprisingly eased everyone's concerns. However, tension rose again when a man named Wyatt was found dead in the woods with a symbol written on the ground before dying. After much debate and a search for clues, they gathered little information. Compounding the situation, Eve, after noticing bloodstains on a rock, was ambushed and fell into a trap, knocking her unconscious. When she awoke, she found her left leg pinned by a fallen boulder and noticed a cute rabbit in the cave. Attempting to signal for help, Eve fired a flare towards the cave entrance, which failed. Hearing a wild beast howl deeper in the cave, she fired another flare in that direction, momentarily scaring the beast away. But soon, a giant prehistoric brown bear approached from the lit area, intending to eat Eve. In a moment of quick thinking, Eve threw a piece of fragrant jerky in another direction. The bear was distracted and ran over to that. Fortunately, when the bear went for the food, it stepped on the boulder and moved it. Luckily, this released Eve. She quickly escaped with the rabbit and limped back to the camp. Gavin, Josh, Riley, and Caroline searched for Dr. Moore. They arrived at a hillside that Dr. Moore often visited, with a cave he deemed excellent. Soon, Gavin and Caroline discovered a skeleton with a ring on its finger, and Caroline confirmed it was Dr. Moore. Observant Josh found an ancient key, and they continued their search with the key in hand. Their perseverance paid off as they finally found the cave where Dr. Moore had lived. Riley was fortunate to find Dr. Moore's notes, but Caroline, cautious, instructed Riley to keep this a secret from Gavin to prevent James from learning about it. Meanwhile, Wyatt's death kept everyone busy. Lucas and Scott investigated extensively, hoping to find the murderer. After several twists and turns, they confirmed that the murder weapon and the symbol left by Wyatt before his death pointed to exiles. Faced with the unfolding events, Scott was forced to admit that he had let Tomet go. Ty and Sam prepared to search for Tomet to resolve the crisis sooner. Before that, Ty visited James in the building, hoping to get help to cure his terminal brain tumor. In exchange, Ty agreed to provide mental therapy for James. Levi had not returned with Gavin's family and waited 10 years due to the failed virus upload in 1988. During this time, Levi joined a Department of Defense project, fell in love, and married a teammate named Melissa. Unfortunately, Melissa passed away. As a result, Levi decided to redeem himself by rescuing those who fell into the sinkhole. 10 years later, he crossed back to 10,000 years ago through a 1998 sinkhole. The once estranged pair reunited and went to find James together. Scott was on the lookout at the camp when Virgil, with ill intentions, replaced him. After Scott left, Virgil indeed started mischief. He tied a red handkerchief to a bamboo pole and a group of people in black gathered outside the camp. Seeing the red signal, Tomet led the exiles to step into the camp to search, and although they did not kill anyone, they still caused significant damage. Lucas saw Virgil hurriedly fleeing the scene, caught up with him, and after questioning, Virgil revealed the truth. Tomet coerced Virgil by threatening his wife, forcing Virgil to pretend to escape from the exile camp and act as an inside man, allowing Tomet and his group inside. Moreover, the mysterious death of Wyatt days earlier was also Virgil's doing, as Wyatt had accidentally seen Virgil searching for a brown cloth-covered book with green trim as ordered by Tomet, leading to a fight in which Wyatt was accidentally killed. Thus, Tomet's search in the camp was also for this book. Meanwhile, while out, Sam and his daughter noticed a wisp of cooking smoke on a small hillside. They ran up and found a recently extinguished campfire and a woman, Jane, who was tied up. Upon inquiry, they learned she was Virgil's wife. After hearing Jane's brief introduction, 
The vigilant Sam immediately realized that the exiles had already reached the camp and urged everyone to hurry back. They encountered Gavin and Levi on their way, and the group ran together towards the camp. Meanwhile, James describes his predicament to Ty in the building, but speaks little, using an excuse to end the conversation. Perhaps his suspicious nature prevented him from opening up to others. However, he dutifully sought James before Ty left and helped him with psychological therapy. Reluctantly, James described the nightmares that troubled him and showed Ty a painting that Isaiah had once made, including one of a blue moon. Gavin, leading people towards the camp, noticed signals from mirrors reflecting sunlight from the camp. Clever Izzy had sent a message using a code her father had taught her, attack, exiles, east. To protect the greater good, Gavin led everyone east. Meanwhile, Tamit's men had captured Veronica and Ella, aiming to find a brown-covered book buried with Veronica and Ella's deceased father. To ensure the book was found, Tamit had Veronica, Ella, and Lucas go to the burial site of their father while he stayed at the camp, waiting for them to bring back the book in exchange for Scott's life. After digging, Veronica found the book. Just then, Gavin and his group arrived, retrieved the book, and rescued the three, heading together towards the camp. Just as Tomit was losing patience and about to kill Scott, a struggle ensued, and Scott stabbed Tomit with a dagger he picked up. When Gavin saw this green-trimmed notebook, he pulled out the paper full of formulas James had given him, precisely the page torn from this book. Gavin also said that the book wrote the way to send them home. Before his death, Tomit disclosed that Kira sent him to steal the book. At the same time, Eve surprisingly found Levi back and got that his real reason to come here was to kill James. Distrusting her husband James, Caroline decided to return to Gavin, worried that a desperate Gavin might turn to James again. Silas was reluctant to let his daughter go. After Caroline left, Silas was shot and fell unconscious by an unknown, and the notes Caroline left behind were stolen. At the camp, there was finally a reason to celebrate. Ty and Para's wedding was about to occur. Everyone was busy dressing up, and Ty asked Eve to be his bridesmaid, which she gladly accepted. Later, Ty disclosed James's Blue Moon plan to Eve and Gavin. Gavin was skeptical, unwilling to believe his father would sacrifice his grandchildren to achieve his goals, but even Ty had no doubts. Ty also invited James to his wedding to test him further. Gavin reassured Eve not to worry, and Ty also shared this with Levi, who told Eve he planned to kill James to prevent further threats. Although Eve disagreed with Levi's extreme approach, she found no alternative and temporarily calmed Levi down. At the wedding, everyone dressed up and celebrated the couple with songs, dances, romance, kisses, and drinks, but a plot to kill was brewing beneath the harmony. Levi had another reason to kill James. During the 10 years Levi was away from the camp, his wife died due to a sinkhole that suddenly appeared, and he blamed James for everything. Despite Eve's earnest persuasion, Levi reluctantly handed over his metal box with a poisonous flower. But it was clear he had not given up. Izzy accidentally found Levi gathering mandrake and quickly informed her mother Eve, who cleverly took the poisoned wine Levi intended for James. Later, Eve and Levi argued about Levi's plot and then Gavin came over. During Gavin's questioning, Eve revealed Levi's intent to kill James. Eve knew the matter and did not tell Gavin in advance. Gavin felt heartbroken and worried about his mother. Then, Gavin went to check on his mother. At that moment, Veronica and Lucas saved Silas back to the castle. In a small room, Gavin only discovered her lying in a pool of blood. James, still at the scene, was naturally suspected of being the murderer. An agitated Gavin nearly killed his father, but Eve arrived just in time and suggested that Kira was the likely culprit. Amidst the chaos, Kira seized the opportunity to flee with the diary stolen from Caroline. In a critical moment, Ty stepped forward but was captured by Kira, causing great dishonor as the groom was abducted on the wedding day, a situation that demanded revenge. Enraged, Para decided to mobilize an army to rescue Ty. While caring for the unconscious Silas, Veronica cleverly linked the numbers in the diary to the Bible and discovered that the sequence at the end of the book represented coordinates, possibly a location that could lead everyone back home. On the wedding day, the castle was heavy with loss and everyone was determined to seek revenge. Para was primarily determined to avenge her abducted husband. James also decided to lead his son and daughter-in-law back to the building to confront Kira directly though Levi was nowhere to be found. Gavin decided to move on without him, but Izzy, concerned for Levi, set out to look for him. Shortly after, near the tower building, 
Tai was released. Tai asked Kira to allow the camp's people to go home once in power, but she refused. Tai then wanted to return to the tribe village, where he coincidentally encountered James, with Gavin and Eve seeking the inside man. The group entered the building through an emergency door, and just as the insider was about to close the door, the missing Levi suddenly appeared, knocked him out, and entered the building. James, ever the cunning fox, used any means necessary to achieve his goals, repeatedly deceiving Gavin, who in turn repeatedly chose to trust his father, this time involving Ty and Eve as well. Fortunately, Eve remained wary of James and after multiple tests, discovered that he had activated the Blue Moon plan. If successful, everything would revert to when Gavin was a child, erasing all related people and events. Eve, unwilling to let this possibility become reality, but outnumbered, was mercilessly knocked out by James. Meanwhile, everyone joyfully improved their facilities at the camp. A man accidentally fell his hammer down to the ground, which ignited a nest of dormant hornets. Before long, a huge buzzing sound was heard from underground, and at the same time, the ground began to shake violently and crack, causing everyone to look towards the ground in terror. After a short while, swarms of hornets emerged from the ground and instantly flew toward the people, forcing people to hide. Unfortunately, Ella was stung and fell unconscious. Veronica, seeing Ella in such a dire state, decided to risk her life to save her. With Scott and Riley's help, they found a syringe of adrenaline and dragged Ella into a vehicle, but in the chaos, the syringe was left outside. Thankfully, Scott and Riley retrieved the syringe and brought it to the car, only to find Veronica also stung. Both faced tough choices, each wanting to give the other a chance to live. But Ella took the syringe and injected it into Veronica's thigh, sacrificing herself to save Veronica. James's hacking of the security network caused damage to the building's security system, so the building initiated an evacuation protocol, and the animals were released. While Ty searched for his cancer medication, Gavin discovered Levi installing explosives. Levi finally explained his need for vengeance. When a sinkhole killed his wife, their daughter also perished, driving him mad. He then sent off the staff from the control room and installed timer explosives. Just before the explosion, Ty and Gavin rushed to stop Levi, and Izzy arrived due to her concerns. Kira took the opportunity to escape. Eventually, Izzy's pleas moved Levi, but they found the 1988-made timer bombs, installed with a faulty safety system, could not be stopped. Helplessly, they watched as the building turned to ruins amidst explosions. Levi was trapped in the ruins under a heavy steel frame, but fortunately, his friends stayed by his side. He eventually escaped the predicament. Back at the camp, Veronica mourned Ella's loss. As the tower is destroyed, the entire camp is also enveloped in a melancholy atmosphere because everyone knows they might forever be trapped in prehistoric times 10,000 years ago. However, life still needed to go on. Sam proposed holding elections to choose a leadership team to improve camp management and use limited resources more efficiently. However, Gavin had not given up on returning home, haunted by a vision of Eve's death that he couldn't let go. He first sought Veronica to get the coordinates she held, then visited the injured Silas. Silas was surprised to see Dr. Moore's notebook that Gavin brought. Combining the coordinates with the data recorded by Moore, Silas deduced there should be another time portal that created the data on the notebook. Then, on the speech date, Gavin confidently informed everyone about another portal, which was possibly 50 miles away from the camp. As long as there was a glimmer of hope, people would never give up, so they packed up and set out. At the marked coordinates, they found a clearing filled with bodies in gruesome death poses. Nearby, something resembling a safe was discovered and Eve used a key found on Dr. Moore's body to open the safe and retrieve a map. Following the map's directions, they encountered a surviving young boy standing before an endless stretch of red leaf trees, their colors striking and intense. They had to cross this forest to find the portal. Eventually, Eve, Riley, and Scott stayed behind while Gavin, Izzy, Sam, and Josh continued forward. Levi's stubborn actions led to the tower's explosion, causing severe consequences. Ty's cancer treatment was also lost in the blast, worsening his condition. Racked with guilt, Levi wandered alone in the mountains and unexpectedly met the surviving Kira. It turned out that all the survivors had reached another research station stocked with necessities. However, the tools needed for production were locked in an iron box by Tomet and buried in the village. Levi seized the opportunity to strike a deal with him, exchanging the iron box for the cancer treatment. Here, Levid was digging that box Kira wanted in the village. At that moment, Silas appeared and got the truth. Then, 
he said he needed to join Levi in the delivery to earn some leverage for a reprieve in the trial these days. However, he wasn't truthful about his intentions. He planned to get close to Kira, using the iron box to avenge his daughter Caroline. Taking advantage of Levi's distraction, Silas took the box and left. Tracing Silas's footprint, Levi caught up with Silas near the delivery point. Silas and Levi reached an agreement, together with Para, to overpower Kira and her assistant, reclaiming the cancer drugs from Kira. As Silas had suspected, the iron box Kira wanted didn't contain production tools, but Dr. Moore left fuel rods to restart the portal. During the exchange, Para suddenly appeared, shot Kira, and retrieved the cancer medication Ty needed. This reconciled Ty and Levi, and Silas made amends for his actions, earning a chance to start anew. During the conversation with the young boy, Eve learned that a monster existed in the reed leaf woods. Eve immediately set off with Riley into the forest, concerned for her family's safety. They eventually met Gavin and the others in a cave, accidentally arriving at the scene from Gavin's vision, where they encountered a prehistoric giant lizard. Although Eve managed to injure the lizard with a spear, Gavin was severely wounded by the creature, his life hanging in the balance. It turns out Gavin's visions weren't always accurate. Initially, he saw Eve dying in his arms, but the roles were reversed. Seeing Gavin injured, Eve did everything she could to save him. At that moment, James entered the cave and was coincidentally caught by Sam, Josh, and Izzy. The box he carried was that iron box filled with the fuel rods. Wasn't that box supposed to be with Levi and Ty? Clever Eve thought of using the portal to go back and save Gavin. Then, the group forced James to bring them to the other space portal. Despite Sam's objections and the unknown risks, she decided to travel back four hours to leave a message for Gavin to prevent the tragedy. After Eve and Izzy left, the portal became unstable. James explained that a damaged cooling system caused overheating and needed repairs. Meanwhile, Veronica and Lucas's relationship progressed rapidly, but they differed in using the portal to return. Lucas felt he was a better person here and feared he'd revert to his former criminal self if they returned, so he chose to stay rather than hold Veronica back. Ironically, Veronica was pregnant and didn't want her child born in this place. She was also confident Lucas would be a good man when he returned. This difference in views caused a rift. At the same time, Petra had an asthma attack and Scott risked finding his inhaler earning more trust from the young boy, who promised to tell Scott everything he knew if he helped to find his mother. Four hours earlier, Eve and Izzy were on their way to the coordinates when they encountered James stealing the fuel rods from Ty and Levi at gunpoint. They managed to save them. They left a warning on the map in the safe for Gavin to be cautious. When they returned to the portal, it had disappeared due to a malfunction. Veronica and Judah, despite exerting all their strength, could not move the tree trunk that had fallen and blocked the water source. At this moment, Lucas appeared, having tamed a white horse. With his help, the broken tree trunk was removed and the cooling system could finally function normally. Immediately, the time portal came back and Eve and the others returned through the portal to the lab just in time to find Gavin revived with the left message in his hand. Now, everything seemed to be improving. Once everyone was gathered, they planned to go home through the portal. As Gavin reflected in front of the portal, he was suddenly struck on the back of his head by James, who then threatened him with a gun. During their struggle, a bullet hit the machinery around the portal. Although Gavin shot James, the portal was destroyed. The portal's destination program malfunctioned, jumping erratically through different eras, forcing everyone to flee. Eve, trying to retrieve the diary, got locked in the lab and then was forcefully sucked into the portal, crossing over to an unknown era. Later, Gavin, Josh, and Izzy sadly walked on the hillside and thought about how to get Eve back. At that moment, a terrifying, enormous footstep resounded through the mountains. At the same time, they saw a giant footprint from an unknown creature in front of them. They continued to move forward cautiously. Suddenly, a terrifying shadow enveloped them, and a colossal foot blocked their path. They slowly looked up and saw a gigantic prehistoric monster standing there. Without a word, they were so frightened that they ran away at full speed. This marks the end of the second season of La Brea. Thanks for watching our recap. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to keep up with our exciting movie journeys. See you in the next video.